Hey everyone, this is Prince Brightstar, and welcome to Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst. Now, Blue Burst is essentially the complete version of Fantasy Star Online. Uh, Fantasy Star Online is a game I have a very long history with. Um, ever since it first came out uh, in the West, uh, and then with subsequent versions, uh, me essentially importing from Japan. And we're basically now at the point where the official servers are offline. And so what I'm going to be doing here is essentially playing through a private server that I have here. And we're just going to hop right into this here. I have a ton of stories to bring up as we kind of go through the series here. But let's go ahead and log in. And as you can see, we've got a brand new account here. And let's go ahead and create a new character. Uh, now, what we're looking at here is the uh, the widescreen client that uh, was released, I want to say, about a year ago. Uh, maybe two years ago. Um, the, uh, the opening that we're looking at here is specifically uh, for Blueburst. But it is, I would consider it to be one of the worst versions of the opening, unfortunately. And, well, for one, we're not actually going to be able to look at the, uh, at the text here. But basically what it's saying is that uh, seven years ago, um, basically, a, uh, their, the planet uh, that these people came from uh, was essentially uh, dying out. And they needed to move on to a new uh, world. And that's where... Uh, the people essentially came across Regol here. And Regol seemed to be a paradise, and so Pioneer 1 was launched. They got things set up so that the main wave of refugees on Pioneer 2 could arrive and uh, live on this planet. Uh, while what's known as the uh, 10, uh, the 10, um, the 10 Country Alliance uh, essentially figured things out uh, as to what to do on their home world. Uh, the reason I'm not exactly a fan of this opening is specifically because of the fact that these character race uh, class combinations we're seeing here were not actually there in the original version. That plus kind of the lackluster graphics we're looking at here. Um, so it's like we've got uh, lesser graphics combined with additional elements that were not originally in the opening. Uh, and so, but we do still get to see the explosion that happens here. And this is happening just as Pioneer 2 is arriving at the planet. And so, all contact has been lost with the men and women of Pioneer 1, and now it is up to basically the people of Pioneer 2 to figure out what's happened or specifically, the government, as well as the Hunters. So, with this done here, we now have to choose a class-race combination here. And I already know what I'm going for. I am a Rawcast through and through. This is the character I've played uh, through the entire time or through the majority of my time with Fantasy Star Online. Uh, Ranger, Android, Male, Rockass have the greatest attack power potential out of the Ranger classes, unable to use techniques, but can use traps. So, I'm gonna keep the default head, body, I'm switching to this one. I'm gonna keep the proportion. And let me make sure I actually get this right here, because naming your character is very important here. Um, it essentially is what dictates what class ID you have here. And actually, I want to double check this before I put this in here. Um, because what I'm looking for is a class ID that is going to work, uh, or, uh, or rather section ID, that's going to work uh, for, um, for the Ranger class. Let's see here. And I'm trying to hit what's called uh, the Green L one. Um, if I was playing a, a hunter, then I would look for uh, a Blue Fool, but I'm looking for Green L. 
Yes, this should be it. There it goes. Okay, so we've got the green yellow section ID. This means we are going to have a higher chance of collecting uh, ranger-based weapons, specifically rifles, but there are other ones available as well. Um, let's go ahead and log in. And so here we are uh, on the server. This is running locally for me. Um, and what I need to do first is I need to change how I move around because the way that this is set up does not work for me at all. So, map direction, set it to non-fix. Uh, keyboard controls, we do want that on, but we do want the keyboard config. We're gonna set that there, and now Q, E, and that goes to F, that goes to W. Okay. Message speed, and we'll set the auto disconnect. Shouldn't need to touch that at all, but at this point, now, I'm all set to go here. So, this is essentially the online lobby for Fantasy Star Online. And once once you're actually logged in, um, you'll see this, but depending upon how full a block is, uh, you'll, uh, you may get put into other blocks here. Um, and basically there are 15 lobbies available. Uh, one to 10 are lobbies that came about once the release of the Xbox and GameCube version came out. Uh, lobbies 11 to 13 are based on the original Dreamcast lobbies, and in fact, let's look at one of them right now. So over here we have a, an image of Regol over there, and then over here are the counters. And lobbies 14 and 15 uh, basically allow you to play what's called Lobby Ball. And it's going to take a moment for it, to, for it to load up here, but... Um, it's essentially, uh, if you didn't want to go hunting at the time, uh, you could instead uh, come over here and uh, get a little competitive with some other players. Now granted, it was not the best kind of setup, uh, and that, that basically comes down to the fact that Lobby Ball is uh, very, uh, it's, it's uh, susceptible to lag quite a bit. But let me kind of show you what this uh, what this looks like here. So we've got our ball that we're essentially kicking around like a like a soccer ball or football, depending upon uh, what region of the world you're in. And uh, you have to uh, hit one of these goals. Uh, there are goals way out there, which I've never personally been able to hit one. I, it's you basically need a special ball to load up, which has a very light uh, feel to it. It's essentially like a, like a like a, like a, like a ball filled with air. But if you wanted to uh, just kind of chill out with some other players, you could uh, you could come up here and play some lobby ball and just compete in that way. But that's not why we're here. An explosion has just occurred on the surface of Regal. We need to find out what happened here. So let's go ahead and organize a party, create a party, episode one and. Let me just clarify here. Uh, episode 3 is not in this game, and that is because Episode 3 uh, was its own separate game. It's a game that takes place 21 years after the events of Fantasy Star Online. So, Episode 1, uh, any random name works here. Let's register and get this going. Alright, so... Here we have the Hunter's Guild, and basically, uh, if we wanted to take on a mission, uh, we would speak to this counter assistant here. Now, in this particular case, um, I'm actually realizing that uh, I should have actually started this in what's called one-player mode here, because there's a there's a specific quest that I want to uh, start with here, and that is the um, the battle training mission because uh, the game kind of really goes into really how to play how to do hunting and uh, things like that in this uh, in this first mission and then once we're done with that then we'll kind of jump into uh, jump into the main story here so battle training uh, from the client Zid please find a hunter and bring him back he went down to Ragol for a quest
Are you bright? I'm Zid. I asked a young hunter, Ash, to do some research on Regal. He's supposed to be done with the job by now, but he hasn't returned yet. Perhaps he got himself into some trouble. So I want to ask you to go to Regal and rescue him. Not by yourself. Please go with that hunter over there. First of all, can you bring him here? I'll talk to you later. All right. Are you bright? It's the first time I've had a partner. Zid asked me to do this job first. Unexpectedly, he told me I'd have to work with someone else. I had to say yes, as he is my client. So, this is Kirik, and as you can see here, he is level 36. He is a battle-hardened hue cast, and there's a reason for that, which we're going to discover during the story. But for the moment, let's speak to Zid. Hello again, Bright. He's Kirik, your partner for this quest. He is a hue cast. He's a pro. Perhaps you can learn a lot from him. Kirik, I know you are, un you are unhappy, but I need two hunters for this. One to retrieve the data disk that I asked Ash to get. The other is to help Ash return here if he is injured. This is my personal agenda. It has nothing to do with business. Ash is my cousin. I don't want to lose him. Please understand. I have no choice. Uh, that obviously, that line obviously coming from uh, Kirik here. Uh, whenever somebody is off screen, uh, then there's not going to be that that arrow, um, uh, or rather the, uh, the 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 text bubble pointing towards the character. So here we are on Pioneer Two, and there's a number of functions that this uh, that this hub kind of serves here. Over here we have the medical center, and so anytime you need to heal up. Uh, you can just come over here, and they'll get you. Uh, they'll get you all fixed up here. Um, eventually, this is a function that you may not use very much, but in the early game, um, if you're playing a human or a Newman, then this is probably going to be a uh, regular visit for you. Uh, let's see what this person has to say. Rico loved the color red. That's why she always wore something red. The red armlet on her left arm really left an impression on people. And that's why we called her Red Ring Rico. Well, she must be alive. I know how tough she is. Okay. And I do kind of want to go through the text of most of the people here. This is all just hearsay, but... The principal is evidently seeking help from the best hunters he can find. I wonder if it's true. Well, he's got me. The explosion occurred just after our landing announcement. The news spread very quickly among the citizen levels. The people who have family on Pioneer 1 are very worried. Tell me, tell me! What happened? Where are they? We have no info at all. Without any info, we can't go on. Your mission is crucial. And uh, that's partially because the government has a news blackout going on at this time. Ah, uh, I miss her. Did you know that Red Ring Rico was aboard Pioneer One? They asked her because she's both a great scientist and hunter. She's a survivor and quick on her feet. But that explosion... Ah, uh, I really miss her. Alright, so, over here we have the bank function. So, if you want to deposit any Masetta or items, you can do that here. Have you met the Techers? To discover the true power of an unknown item, they must examine it. But you can't always believe them. Each Tekker has their own specialty. Oh, don't I know that. <laughs> uh, you're gonna learn in time here that these guys... Mm, Sometimes they need to reevaluate things after you first show them an item. Um, basically, anytime we come across an unknown item, it's their job to take a look at that item and essentially identify it. Uh, right here, we have the weapon shop. Uh, and I don't see anything that we need right now. Here, we have the armor shop. Uh, once again, don't have anything that we need right now. 
Uh, yes, Rooks, uh, that is one of the, uh, one of the differences. Um, in the original Fantasy Star Online, if you happen to die, um, you would drop your Masetta M weapon, and that did lead to some griefing by other players online. Uh, so here we have the item shop, and here there is an item that I do want to pick up. I'm going to spend all my Masetta, because I want to get as many of these as I possibly can. And the reason for that is, aside from what we see on my character, there's also um, a little thing floating on my shoulder, or at least we're going to see that in just a moment. Uh, let's see what these two guards have to say. This area is for A-rank hunters who take part in critical missions. It is isolated from other areas for security reasons. Take this teleporter for instance. It has direct access to Ragol. But access is restricted. Only a few hunters are permitted to use it. Pioneer 2 departed after Pioneer 1 confirmed Ragol was suitable. Because of Pioneer 1's report, we only brought a small army. Did we take too big a risk? So yes, indeed, the uh, size of the army is limited, and so the government essentially is having to farm out the work uh, to the Hunter's Guild. So let's head on down to Regol in the forest. All right, so here is that little floating thing I was telling you about a moment ago. This is a mag, and a mag is essentially a technology that uses D cells in combination with what's called an emotion engine, um, or emotion, emotional AI rather, um, which basically uh, keeps everything under control. And the reason I wanted to pick up those antidotes is this thing is essentially alive, and so we can give it items, and that will help it to grow. So I'm just going to give it a bunch of antidotes here. That's going to improve my dexterity. And I want to bring this up to about 45 dexterity, and after that point, I'll then switch over to power. So, here we have some boxes. Let's break these open. Anti-paralysis and antidote we really can't use since we don't get affected by status effects like humans and humans do. Um... And we, are, we have built-in trap vision, so we don't have to worry about that either. either. So that's uh, those are essentially items that we can just vendor, uh, aside from the antidotes, which I'm going to hang on to for feeding my mag. Now, we just got this green version of a handgun here. And that uh, essentially indicates that it's going to be more powerful than the typical version. Now, we don't see that here. These are, these are my statistics currently. We don't see it here, but where we do see it is right here, where we have these four uh, types here, Native, A-Beast, Machine, and Dark. Those represent the four types of enemies that you can encounter in the game. And so this particular version of the handgun has a 10% boost to Native creatures and 5% to A-Beast or Altered Beast. So let's go ahead and put that on. Prepare yourselves for the savage creatures of our goal. If you're close enough, a cursor shows you which enemy you can attack. Don't let them surround you. Indeed, and there's one more thing that we need to do before we get started here. And that is we need to go over uh, to Customize here in the menu. Customize allows us to change what's on the action menu. Now, I keep my character set up a specific way here. Um, what we have here is attack. A standard attack has high accuracy but low damage. Heavy attack, a stronger attack but with lower accuracy. And then this here is extra attack. It's not showing right now. Uh, but it's, uh, but it is something that's going to come up eventually. Uh, yes, Rooks. Um, that is, that is, that is in fact true. This is, um... What's playing out right now is a series of events that happened before uh, Fantasy Star Portable 2 came along and essentially retconned almost the entirety of the Fantasy Star Online series. Although there is also still some question of canonicity with that. 
Uh, it was never actually officially confirmed that that um, is the real fate of what happens. Uh, now, before we go here, though, uh, we also have this back row, but I'm not going to be using that. And the reason is, when it comes to your cast characters, you don't need to use them. I'm going to go over here, and where we have this model mate, I'm going to push the number one. And then here is the die mate, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. This one here is specific for battle mode, so we're not going to need that. So all the actions that, we're, that we could possibly need in this series, uh, I have now taken care of. And you can now see them all spread out down at the bottom. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, Chris, uh, that is something that I do plan to cover eventually, but let's, uh, let's kind of get into things here. So, here we've got a Booma. These are the basic enemy you're going to find in the forest. And as you can see, these enemies come in different ways here. Uh, and that's partially because of the limitations of the Dreamcast. Now, yes, things have improved since then, but because the maps essentially got imported directly uh, from the original Fantasy Star Online into Blue Burst, there really wasn't a reason uh, Sega really wasn't able to adjust for that. They did add more and more enemies as things went on, but even in Episode 4, you're going to find different waves of enemies pop up. Uh, so here we have another enemy type here. These are Savage Wolves. Uh, there is also uh, an alpha wolf type uh, called uh, uh, a barbarous wolf, uh, which we should be seeing at some point here. Be careful. Even if you defeat one group, another one may be hiding near you. Watch the radar. Prepare for the battle so you don't get surrounded. And indeed, one of the uh, one of the um, one of the perks of being a ranger is you pretty much get to play keep away with all the enemies that you come across. Um, well, for the majority of them, anyway. There are some that will just meet you right at the entrance of a room, and there's not much that you can do. Okay, so I just picked up a barrier, and that is something that we can go into our equipment list for. So, frame is our armor, while barrier and shields are essentially our shields that we can wear. And those continue to give us additional stats. Now one thing I do want to point out here, um, actually no, we can't see it on this one. Uh, we will, yeah, we can't see it on these. I'll, br I'll, bring, that, I'll bring that topic up uh, shortly. We should run into some armor eventually here. That's a door switch, press it. The door should become unlocked. Okay. Now, one of the cool things that I love about Blueverse is the fact that you also have the ability to control your camera. Uh, so you have the ability, if you wanted to, you could always put it into uh, Endless Nightmare mode. Or you can uh, actually zoom the camera out further than you were ever were able to uh, than it was ever able to that you could ever do before. So what we've got here is a Manes. This is another enemy type from this area. And basically that is a hive that is uh, spitting out uh, these little guys here, these mothlands. And as you can see, uh, Kirika is just going to town on that thing, so that'll help to bring it down faster. There we go. Now, one of the unique things about this is there is a delay behind how this thing goes down. And so uh, the next wave will still take a few seconds even after you kill it. Um, and you're going to find that most noticeable with that particular uh, Manus there. So what I'm doing here is essentially a, kind of a typical combo that you would do. Um, I'll, I'll kind of explain that again in a, in a moment. Let me kind of get through this here. In some areas, you must defeat all the enemies to unlock the door. Perhaps it's a security reason. Other doors can be opened through switches. Okay, so basically what I do here is um, basically I'm just kind of tapping the button in a specific tempo. If I just tried to uh, essentially just kind of uh, tap constantly the uh, 
the attack button, the attack would, uh, would essentially stop after the first one, or maybe you'd get lucky on the second one. There's a, uh, there's a specific rhythm that you need to keep up with this, and that's how you get, essentially, your three combos in. Alright, so, here we go, armor. And we've also picked up a, a saber. Actually, two sabers at this point. Let's go to the armor here first. So, one thing about armor and shields in this game, and also with weapons, is you need specific statistics. When it comes to armor and shields, you need to be a specific level to use them. While when it comes to uh, weapons, you need to have uh, specific either attack power or defense power or mental power uh, to uh, be able to use them. Um, now, for uh, Hugh uh, or rather for Hunters and Rangers, they can't use Force Weapons, so that really doesn't even matter here. But, one thing about being a Ranger is you're technically a more useful Hunter. And that's just because you have a higher rate to hit than even your best Hunter would have. And so that's why... Sometimes you'll find rangers that run around with sabers or with partisans, another weapon type that we'll come across eventually. Arms and protectors have attributes. Learn to link attributes to enemy types. Monsters around here are all native animals. Practice on them. Techniques also have attributes. Learn the attributes if you want to survive. So he's talking about what we saw uh, earlier about the uh, the percentage increase that you could get. If you're with your teammates, they'll watch your back. If you're alone, try to change the view often to look around. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dragwin, I'm, I'm just kind of reading through your, uh, through your, um, through your, uh, comment there. Uh, yes, um, in fact, I've got, uh, some of my own stories to tell, um, which I'm gonna cover eventually, um, but, uh, certainly if you're interested in any, if, if you're interested at all, uh, with, uh, really any aspect of Fantasy Star, uh, PSO World is one of the, uh, one of the biggest sources out there, um, Including for Fantasy Star Online 2, which is the uh, the current game that's out. Um, there's a, a number of uh, a number of fan projects that have uh, gone on on the forums. There, art work comes out, um, and uh, stories as well. So it's um, and I've been a, I've been a member of PSO World uh, since uh, I want to say like. Late 2000, early 2001, and the uh, the person that coded the uh, the server that I'm using here, oh, that's a hit. Um, uh, they are called Soda Boy, but I know them from PSO World as Watashiwa. Um, so I've known them for uh, for a very long time. What's wrong? Is it difficult to hit the enemies? Uh, no problem. Alright, it's okay as long as you aren't a liability. So, once again, that's Kirik kind of, uh, kind of saying there that I can't believe I'm like this hunter. Alright, um, so, it's been quite a while since we fed the mag. So I do want to feed it again here. Typically, when it comes to mags, uh, you can feed them one. Uh, you can feed them three times every four and a half to five minutes or so. Um, there are timers that you can use that can help with the leveling process, and that's probably something that I will employ at some point during this series as well. Uh, but just for the sake of the first episode, I didn't want to have something ringing every five minutes here. And that's also partially why I'm running my own uh, server here. Um, there are servers like uh, Ultima and Affinia out there. Uh, in fact, Soda Boy is uh, the one that 
uh, does the development on uh, Ithinia. Uh, the server I'm running is essentially an older version of the server that Ithinia is based on. Uh, the reason I'm not playing on there uh, is simply because uh, there's a... Uh, basically, I did not want to have uh, text constantly scrolling across my screen uh, whenever players found uh, rare weapons in different games. Uh, I didn't want to have that interrupting the show constantly. Uh, but there are certain functions that I simply cannot do uh, with this server. For example, challenge mode. That I cannot, uh, that was not finished at, uh, at the time that this version of the server came out. So um, definitely when it comes time to go through challenge mode, that is probably something that we will uh, go to Affinia for. Uh, so here we've got Rag Rappies. Uh, Rappies are throughout the Fantasy Star universe. Um, and all the different dimensions and everything, they're, they're just everywhere. They, they are essentially the mascot of the series. And as is in typical fashion, uh, they will fall down for a while, and then... Uh, sometimes it takes a few more seconds than, uh, than you intend. Oh, and there we go. Uh, eventually they get up. Here's a simple battleship. Be mindful of the colors during the battle. The cursor color above the enemy is a hint on how to attack an enemy. All right, and I know he's gonna go more in detail uh, with that in just a moment here. I just wanna break all the boxes here first before we continue. Because at this point, Mesetta is uh, an important thing, but once you hit about level 50 or so, you're not going to worry about Masetta at all uh, in this game. And that's that, I think, is kind of one of the flaws that happened with this game, is essentially the money became worthless too quickly. Uh, Sega definitely fixed it up uh, with Fantasy Star Universe, at least until a lot of it got distributed. Uh, right, look at the action palette. See the outline colors? Notice that the, col that the cursor color has a matching action palette color. So a red cursor means press the red action palette key button. Got it? So this is uh, something that's actually not going to come into play for me, just simply by the fact that I am a cast. This is something that's going to be more if you're a human or a Newman, uh, whereby you have the ability to use both weapons and techniques. Uh, techniques uh, essentially being the standard spells of the game. Alright, so take a look at the mini-map there in the upper right corner. Uh, there's actually a blue arrow there, which means there is an NPC here. Who is it? I don't know who you guys are, but be careful. They're still hiding around here. So he's been attacked. I can hear something. A growl? All right, so we got the data disk, but we are surrounded by savage wolves, and here is that barbarous uh, wolf I was telling you about before. Uh, now, whenever he goes down, the savage wolves will give themselves a debuff because essentially their alpha male is gone. All right. Let's wake this guy up. Thank you. What, Zid? Now I know why you guys are here. He always treats me like a kid. I completed the quest, but suddenly they attacked me here. Monsters appeared and I dropped the disc. I couldn't do anything. I'll take this boy with me. You deliver the disc to the client. Then we can finish this job. Right, train yourself. Become much stronger to impress me. Ha ha ha. All right, so they have left, and a telepipe has opened, leading us back to Pioneer 2. So, what I want to do at this point is I want to visit the shop. Actually, first, let me get my items in order here, because we have some selling to do. 
So... We can actually keep that saber, and then... We'll keep the two bottom handguns. And as for the armor... Oh, wow! We got a three-slot armor here. Okay, so slots... I, I'm not sure if this is open right here. Uh, no, we can't find any yet. But what slots are basically add-ons that you can equip to your armor, which will increase uh, the statistics that you have to it. Some of them also have special properties, like being able to give you additional speed to your attacks so that they come out faster and things like that. All right, so sell saber, sell saber, and then we sell all of these, sell these. Get rid of the zero slot one. Lose the mono or mono fluids rather. That's specifically for technical points, which we can't use. Lose the anti paralysis and the trap vision. And now we'll stock up on antidotes. And I believe it's feeding time again. Uh, now the synchro and IQ, those are going to come into play eventually here. Uh, once this little guy has kind of grown up a little bit. Uh, but for the moment, let's go ahead and grab some more antidotes now. As much as I would love to Dragwind, as you saw, those haven't actually opened up for me yet. <laughs> Alright, so, once the quest is done, we head back over to the Hunter's Guild and we talk to the client. Well, in this particular case, Ash is here as well. Thank you. I'll keep practicing. Kirik already left after receiving the Maceta. Phew. I have never seen such an intimidating android. It was like that android was built for battle. This must be the disc that I, that I asked Ash to find. Thanks. Ash is enduring the pain since he won't go see a doctor. You can get your reward at the Hunter's Guild. Thank you. So, we talk to the counter. You've been awarded 500 Maceta. And with the mission complete, that kicks us back out to the lobby. And from here, I think it's time we actually start up the main story here. So, let's go ahead and start up a new game. And so, for players that started with uh, the Dreamcast and GameCube version, and I think maybe the Xbox version, I'm not 100% certain on that, this is essentially where things started for you once you created your character. Uh, now, this character over here, Momoka, she was added with Bluebirds, and it's through her that we get the expanded story that was provided for Bluebirds. So, let's go ahead and talk to her. How do you do? I'm the new receptionist here. My name is Momoka. Please let me know if I can ha ever help you out. So, we have government quests here. 1-1, Planet Regol. Uh, for the Dreamcast, as well as the GameCube and Xbox versions, these did not exist. Um, these basically go more into detail, give you a better um, understanding of kind of all, kind of what's driving the events of of, uh, of the story here. So, client is the principal. We need expert hunters like yourself to explore and gather data from Regol's surface. Job can be joined while in progress, and that was also one of the nice things that they added with Bluebirds. For these main story quests, essentially, uh, even if the quest was already going, you could jump in and uh, while the quest was already going. For all the other quests out there, you could not do that. Are you Bright, the Ranger? I'm Principal Tyrell. We have a bad situation. We need to act quickly. Did you hear about the explosion on Regol? Very well. Pay attention and listen to me. We've lost contact with Pioneer 1. We have no idea what has happened. We've sent probes, but communication always gets cut off near the surface. What happened on Regol and Pioneer 1? Are the people still alive? 
The Council made a decision to send a manned search team. You're a skilled ranger. We need your help. We have no choice. We need a place to settle on. Ask Irene, my secretary, for further details. Uh, could you... No, it's nothing. Take care and good luck. Alright. So, let's talk to Irene. Well, let me brief you on your mission. Once you're on Red Goal, check the status of the residential area. Checking the status of the Central Dome is a good idea. A teleporter was launched earlier. You can go to Regol directly from here. It may be a little risky, so please be careful. That's all. Um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. No, nothing. I wish you the best of luck. I don't know, you want to say something more. This is just between us, okay? The principal's daughter was on Pioneer 1. After the explosion, he's been worried sick about her. He can't even sleep. This is a personal request, if it's possible. Find out what happened to her. He isn't in a position to ask you such a personal favor. Red Ring Rico. A famous hunter and a top scientist on Pioneer 1. Rico's his only daughter. Please, look for her. Alright, and we've also got some science advisors here. Our planet was tearing itself apart. We couldn't stop it. So we started searching for a new planet, and we, dis we discovered Regol. A huge transport ship was sent to Regol. That was Pioneer 1. Pioneer 1 confirmed Regol as a suitable location to settle on. When we left, Pioneer 2. That was us. Oh, sorry, you already knew that. When we received the signal to land from Pioneer 1, we saw that strange explosion. That's when we made our decision. We've decided to orbit Regol and collect data before landing. So, that's essentially the opening of the game. And now, the people down here are going to say pretty much similar things to what they said before. Uh, the explosion occurred just after our landing announcement. The news spread very quickly among the citizen level. So yeah, they're not saying anything new here. Uh, as we progress the story, however, uh, they will be saying more. Alright, so we are headed down to the forest. And as we can see, we are pretty much in the same spot that we ended up in, uh, in battle training, and that is kind of by design. There are essentially, uh, for the forest, there are three maps that make up the forest area. Uh, and those maps essentially change what direction, or rather, where you start, where you end, and what direction you're going to take. So, now that we are out of the one-player mode, we're going to have a lot more creatures ganging up on us here. So, I think it's time for me to show you the traps that I have. So, let me launch a confusion trap and a damage trap. So, that confuses them and also causes damage to them. And confusion makes them attack themselves. Now, eventually I will obtain uh, more items, or rather, uh, different weapons to use. Uh, for rangers, uh, the uh, the main ones that we use are going to be rifles, uh, shots, and mech guns. Although personally, I was never a huge fan of mech guns, uh, so uh, we'll probably see that um, less than the others uh, in this playthrough as well. Alright, we got a set of six coming in. Let's do a similar plan as before. Confusion and damage. Oh, actually, that was, uh... That was freeze that I popped there, not damage. Okay, so I've taken quite a bit of damage here. So, I'm just gonna run out of the room real quick, and if I stand still, 
one of the functions that you get as a cast is your body will heal over time. Now, it goes kind of slow right now, but that's going to eventually uh, pick up speed. Uh, just so we're not waiting forever, though, I'm just going to pop a model mate at this point. Uh, when it comes to uh, Newman characters, uh, you get uh, technical points instead uh, as your automatic recovery. Uh, and humans don't get anything like that, so... Sorry! Alright, so... When it comes to fighting these wolves here, uh, one of the most important things is you always want to keep facing them, because if you face them, they'll never actually try to attack you. If you're facing away, that's when they're going to jump at you. Now the other thing I will note is that sometimes they can kind of be a little off on their aim, so even though they are kind of jumping at you, and even though they are touching your character, uh, it won't actually do any damage. Uh, kind of like what, what just happened there. Let's skip up all the items. It looks like we just got a more powerful frame. So let's see what we got here. That gives us an extra two defense points and two evasion points. And let's feed our mag. Okay, so... My mag just hit level 10, and so because of that, it has evolved into a new creature, and this has now opened up what are called Photon Blasts. Uh, right now, we only have one Photon Blast available to us. Uh, this is Estella, but uh, it will eventually, uh, we'll eventually have uh, three of them available. Uh, and really, it depends upon what you feed it and what its stats are that essentially determine what it evolves into. Alright, where did that last one go? Alright. Now, if you're trying to grind out uh, levels, uh, sticking around one of these uh, can be uh, a good way to level up uh, since it'll just send out one enemy at a time for a while. Uh, it's especially useful in uh, Ultimate Mode where the enemies just have very high stats that you have to uh, go against to even hit them. Uh, although that was kind of uh, kind of tuned back uh, compared to uh, uh, what you got out of version 2 on the Dreamcast. Uh, Fantasy Star Online uh, version 2 was actually very hard to start off with uh, if you didn't have any uh, hit weapons. And even then, uh, pretty much the only way you were going to make any progress in that was to get your first what's called a red weapon. Uh, but that's, uh, that's specifically a uh, rare drop uh, that comes up. And we're not going to see any of those for a long time. Uh, now, one other thing you might notice is when I leveled up, all of my traps got refilled. So if you know that you're uh, pretty close to a level up, and you need it, and you're thinking about heading back up to the uh, to the medical center to refill those traps, uh, hold off a little bit, and you might uh, you might actually be able to make it. And that is one of the functions that the medical center uh, does provide. Uh, for uh, for cast characters as well. All right, so we've got this on the ground here. Oh, actually, I think I missed one from before. Let me uh, let me kind of track back because that's actually really important that I uh, that I look at those.
because uh, this is this kind of is how the story of uh, Fantasy Star Online has also told through these uh, through these capsules on the ground. I, I've gone through this uh, so many times in the past that it it, it, it was just I, I just completely forgot to bring them up. All right, ah, testing, testing. <laughs> I'm Rico, Rico Tyrell. I'm a hunter. This capsule is for anyone who has come here looking for me. I hope this helps you. I don't know who you are, but you must know that there's something unusual about Regol. This is important. Pay attention to everything around you if you want to survive. Okay. Boomas. I don't like their weird faces. Be careful, you don't want to get surrounded by them. Red gates are locked. Green mains, they're open. Of course, you knew that. So essentially, the function that these capsules serve are essentially... We're, it allows us to retrace the steps that Rico has taken on her journey as well. Mothmans will keep appearing, one after another. You have to strike them out at the root. Uh, talking about the nest that they come from. Disable the laser fences by using the colored switches. So this also kind of serves as a tutorial in the uh, early part of this here as well. Okay, Resta. Once again, we're a cast, so we won't be able to use any techniques. Uh, so that is something that will get vendor for uh, for antidote money. Right, so we got Boomas over there, as well as the Mothness here. It looks like that one got stuck in the tree there. There we go, it freed itself. Now, something kind of funny about Blue Burst and the fact that you can use a keyboard um, I'm not entirely sure about this for version 2 on the on the PC, uh, but uh, you can kind of do a little dance here if you wanted to as well. It's, it's just something silly. Hey Ads, uh, welcome to the show. Now, what I should receive uh, as we start to finish up the forest area, but that's uh, it's still going to take a while to get there. Uh, but once we do finish up the forest area, we should receive a uh, rifle, which is going to be a longer range weapon uh, for a ranger. Uh, the uh, handgun that I'm using right now, uh, hunters are able to use them as well, uh, and, as well as forces. this gate open. That's a monomate, so let's heal up. And it's probably time to feed our mag. So now that it has leveled up uh, into the uh, Kalki form, uh, it's taking a it's taking a bit longer for it to actually level up here. Don't show your back to a savage wolf. 
it'll, it's a, it'll attack if it sees its opening. So just what I was uh, what I was explaining before about how to handle them. And this is also kind of one trick that you can do as a ranger, and this is one thing I will be taking full advantage of uh, during this series, is the fact that uh, rangers can sometimes play around with the AI of the game and essentially uh, attack enemies without, a lot, uh, without them fighting back, essentially. You need a good amount of space to actually make it work, um, but it is something I will be taking full advantage of. This one's kind of close. And let's switch over to the Saber, actually. And the fact of the matter is, there are some, uh, some enemies out there that you can't even use uh, ranged weapons on. But we'll come to them in time. Okay, so, what's happening right now is my mag uh, just had its Photon Blast meter fill up to 100%. And so what it's doing to me right now is it's providing invulnerability uh, while it's got that swirling animation around me. Uh, now at this level it's not going to last for that long, um, but as we continue to level up, uh, it'll uh, it'll actually uh, provide for uh, provide that invulnerability for actually quite a while. Yeah, so at this point it's already gone. Right. Once again, always go for the uh, for the uh, Barbaros Wolves there, so you can uh, give the uh, Wolves the uh, debuff and make them easier to take on. Okay, and moving on to the next section here. Actually, let's pick this up first here. Now, do we have anything better than what we got? Looks like it's actually uh, worse with that frame. Now, just as a, kind of a pro tip, uh, when it comes to once you start to max your character out in terms of its stats, uh, you want to go for uh, your defensive power uh, rather than uh, your evasive power. And the reason for that... Um, basically, it has to do with how uh, you'll get knocked down by hits. Uh, and those can come out pretty fast. Uh, if, um, if your evasion is, uh, too high. Uh, essentially you won't get knocked down anymore. Actually, I need to double check that. It, it, it's been years since I played Fantasy Star Online. I might have that backwards and it's actually the evasion that you want to go for. Uh, but that's gonna that's gonna be more a fact uh, once you really start to max your character out uh, at around um, level 200 or so. Uh, and uh, as a version difference, um, you didn't actually have level 200 uh, in the original Fantasy Star Online. Uh, you were capped at uh, level 100, uh, but that uh, was expanded to 200 and has always been uh, level 200 uh, ever since version 2 came out. So at this point, we are full up on items, so we're going to pop a telepipe, and we're going to make our way back up to Pioneer 2. And we are going to dump some of this stuff on the shops. I 
Actually, I should go ahead and sort that first, just to make it easier. Okay, so this seems like the best saber to have. Let's start selling some of this. There's a three slot, I don't want to get rid of that. There's the mono fluid. There's Resta, get rid of the anti paralysis. And let's fill up on antidotes again. So we can feed our mag. Now, monomates are the base healing item, dimates uh, are a stronger version, and then trimates are going to bring you full health no matter how far down you are. Alright, uh, now let's figure out the best handgun. Uh, that handgun will be good for the caves, uh, which is another area. But this one is good for the natives. Okay, we should be all set. Uh, let me see if there are any units yet. Nope, not yet. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, since we've got some extra Masetta to spare here, we should also grab a couple of Telepipes just so we can come back up if we, uh, if we do happen to fill up again. And that's one of the nice things about this game. Uh, you can pretty much return back and uh, get back to the uh, shops whenever you need to, aside from certain quests and uh, when you go into a boss area. Uh, you can also do that in Fantasy Star Online 2, of course, uh, but of course in that game, uh, if you've uh, invested, um, you can expand your item pack from the base of 50 all the way up to 150 items, if you wanted to. Rag Rappies are cowards, but they like to attack straight on. When a Rag Rappy falls down, it may still be alive, so be careful. It is impossible to kill a Rappy in the Fantasy Star series. No joke. If you pay attention, uh, they just get up and run away, essentially. So, we got some more Boomas popping up here. But, the teleporter to the next area is right here, so why don't we go ahead and hop right into there. So, here we are in Forest Area 2. This spot is blocked off. And here we've got a new enemy, a Gigoboma, uh, which is a stronger version of the Booma. Now, one trick that I love, uh, given the setup that I have for my, uh, for my palette here, is I can basically run through these enemies without having to worry about uh, essentially getting a uh, stun locked here I uh, and uh, If I kind of move close to them like that see how I kind of put my uh, put my gun into the air a little bit there Whenever I get close to an enemy um, That is going to happen unless I switch my pallet to the back where I don't have anything set up Now It may seem like I wasn't really doing anything, but take a look on them on the mini map there I managed to actually hook one of the Gigobumos over there so now, I don't have to worry about that one anymore. And that that's a trick that really only works in this game simply because of how the AI was, desi uh, was designed. Uh, with most modern MMOs, you're not going to find that kind of thing working. So, from here, since he can't get to me, it's basically a free kill. Alright, 
so I think for this round, let me break out the confusion. And now while they're worried about themselves, I'm gonna hit this gate and I'm gonna open up the thing that got locked over here. And what this is, is it's essentially called a bath and it essentially allows you to heal yourself up all the way. And in this case, it also allows me to once again fire at the enemies freely since they are in range, but they can't reach me. So their AI is essentially just going in circles there. So being a ranger in this game really requires you to kind of know the environment, look around, see what you've got to work with and get the enemies hooked up uh, wherever you can so that they essentially can't even reach you. All right, level four, and that's actually perfect timing here. So now we can put on that armor. And so what we got here now are these three slots. Uh, those are the slots that are on this armor. You can have up to four of them. And in here, you can put on those uh, those uh, status boosters, like I was describing before. Let's also uh, get the shield on. Now this room here, the item boxes are lined up like this. It has gone dark. This is the indication when it comes to the government quest that you are about to uh, you're about to enter the final area of the mission. So let's feed our mag. And uh, once you get the third one in, you don't have to wait for the bar to fill up. Uh, it's only with the first two instances of that that you have to wait. Uh, you can just uh, hit home or whatever button lets you out of the menu to uh, get out of that. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna have a bunch of wolves here, as we can see. And essentially, uh, the end of these missions are uh, very similar in nature to uh, what are called uh, the Endless Nightmare Quests, uh, except uh, you don't get your uh, camera put behind you. But, like I said before, if you wanted to, you could do that. And just have that really close-up look that you get from Endless Nightmare Quests. Alright, we're getting surrounded. Let me pop a, uh, a trap. This is, this is essentially how a, how a ranger is going to play, uh, for the most part. Uh, there are certain weapons that uh, you can, of course, try to hunt for, which is going to make your gameplay very, very different. Uh, for example, the Frozen Shooter is one of the best weapons that a ranger can have, hands down. And it's because it has a high chance to freeze an enemy in place. Uh, the Spread Needle is another one that will cause paralysis on enemies and basically make it so that they can't attack you. And then there are other weapons out there as well, um, but we will get to them in time. Alright, so... Okay, so, they were hung up on the, uh, on the corner here, but as soon as I, as soon as I turned, uh, they jumped for me. Oh! Alright, that's something we'll, uh, we'll talk about in, uh once I'm out of here. So, once again, they're having trouble reaching me here. And I'm curious. Yep. So, they can still hit me there. 
but I'm essentially on a bridge right now. And because they like to circle around in order to get the hits in, they can't reach me here. So, this is another safe spot for a ranger to be. Alright, let me grab my saber at this point here. really wants to run away, doesn't he? Alright, there's another of the uh, Barbaros Wolves, so let's go after it first to uh, debuff the Savage Wolf. Go. All right, so now we got a Manus coming down. Actually, two of them. Okay, so once again, our photon blast has filled up. So I think this is a good time to take advantage. If I was pointing the right way, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe this will still hit something. Okay, so I got a couple of hits in there. Uh, but yeah, Photon Blasts are uh, basically really powerful attacks that uh, will let you uh, get uh, a really good hit in on uh, enemies. After the uh, wolves first, just because they're going to be doing the most damage to me. Those Manes are, or uh, Mothmans are really only going to do like one or two uh, HP uh, per attack to me. There we go. Switch over to the handgun. And uh, what you just saw there a, a moment ago is a uh, kind of a little bit of a bug. Uh, it's more frequent to see it when uh, when you're dealing with uh, with mech guns, but it is possible to actually, as you're loading a weapon in, uh, fire that weapon and not uh, and essentially have the bullets from the weapon come in from the side of the uh, from the side of the map. Uh, but. Once again, that's just as the weapon is loading in. It's not something that continues to happen through the whole thing. Alright, so let's see if there's anything more to this here. There might be another pack. Nope, looks like that's it. So, let us inspect the crash ship here. Recovered probe data. Alright. And here is the teleporter back up to Pioneer 2. Alright, so, let us speak with the principal. Actually, before I forget, antidote time. Good job. Is that so? 
the route to the Central Dome was blocked off. So we couldn't get a handle on the situation. We sent the probes we discovered uh, we recovered to the lab for analysis. And my, were we surprised. Pioneer One had never reported anything involving creatures that might be dangerous to humans. Why are they down there on Ragol now? Alright, let's speak to the principal again. This just keeps getting more and more mysterious, doesn't it? The investigation of Ragol may get progressively difficult. For the time being, please wait until you get further orders. Thank you very much. So there are hostile creatures. It seems that the planet Regol is indeed quite dangerous. I'm very glad that you're safe. Why don't you go and rest up for a bit for now? Well, at this point, let's go ahead and talk to Momoka, actually. And that now marks the quest as complete. So... Up next, we would have uh, the quest 1-2 available to us, uh, but we're not going to be looking at that right now. Uh, Koku Tana, yes, uh, this is uh, Blue Burst that I'm playing here. Uh, so, we're going to create another party here, and we're going to set this to one-person mode again here, because I want to continue with those side stories at this point here. So, we've completed battle training already, Let's take a look at Claiming a Stake. Rakdun's son is the client. My father, Rakdun, has gone to claim land on Ragol. Find him. Ah, here you are, Ranger. My father disgusts me. As soon as we arrived, he ran off saying, I'm off to stake out land. Staking out Ragol? It's too early to do that. We don't know much about Ragol. It's dangerous. Please, find my father. Alright, and we've got another hunter here. Rakdon is a greedy man. He's so self-absorbed. But ironically, his son is a very good-natured man. So when it comes to these side story missions, uh, even the characters that show up on Pioneer 2 are going to change. Rakdon? Oh yes, I saw him. He was fleeing from some monsters in the forest. Help him? No way! Sympathy only gets you into trouble. Why do I have to save him? It's not my job. Okay, so... Let's make our way over to the shop. And we're gonna get rid of the frame and the barrier at this point. And this armor. Cane, cane, handgun, trap vision, dye fluid. Once again, that is for uh, forces. Oh, I had the wrong handgun on. Oh well. Let's uh, go ahead and equip the right one then. And let's fill up on antidotes. Do we have any new weapons yet? Aha! So, we now have access to rifles. And as you can see, those are quite a bit more powerful uh, and more accurate than your standard handgun. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of those up. Uh, one thing to note about these pluses here is uh, those basically increase how strong the weapon is from the base uh, of what it was originally. Uh, and each weapon has its own unique maximum number of pluses that you can give it, or grinds, as they're called. Uh, whereby you would need grinders in order to essentially make the weapon more powerful. So, uh, before I pick that up, actually, uh, let me see if we've got any slot items now. No, still nothing there. Okay, so. Rifle plus two it is, because it has that native boost on it. And let's make our way over to the forest again here.
Now, in most cases, you're not going to find a rifle in the forest, uh, aside from the boss area. So, getting uh, getting your first rifle is typically going to either come, uh, you're either going to get it from the shop, or you're going to get it uh, as a reward from a quest. All right, so we got some rag rappies here. Now, one thing that you can do if you're kind of in a rush here is you can uh, hit the rag rappies from a distance, and they'll just uh, essentially uh, count as being killed. There we go. Now the boomers are going down pretty quick again since we're in the uh, one-player mode. And once again, uh, at this point in the game, uh, Mesetta is uh, really quite a valuable thing. Uh, but eventually that won't be as much of an issue, especially as you start to find rare weapons. So, I believe the person we're looking for is right over here. Ah! I'm scared! What are these monsters doing here? I can't raise the price of this land if these monsters hang around. My son asked you to take me back to Pioneer 2? <laughs> of course I'll go back with you. If you do me a favor. I've left three capsules on prime land locations. You go and recall all of them. Then I'll go back with you. Why? Because capsules aren't cheap. Hurry now. The capsules are this way and that way. So, when you say this way and that way... You mean one of them is back where I started, right? At least if memory serves. Like I said, it's been uh, several years since I've played Fantasy Star Online. Ah, there it is. Funny we didn't happen to trip on this thing as we uh, got into the area. Got Capsule 3. Now, the next one that we can uh, look for should be over on the gate to the right. So let's open up this door once we check out these boxes. And now that I've got this uh, rifle, uh, I really don't need to be touching the uh, sabers anymore. At least for the time being, since rifles are about as strong as you're going to... Uh, they're about as strong as a saber. Here is the first of the capsules. Oh, I'll agree on that one, uh, there, Rooks. Um, Although, I, I haven't personally used one myself. Alright, and I think the last of the capsules was over here. But the door is locked. And since this is Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst, I cannot use a trick that was originally, uh, that was available in the original version of Fantasy Star Online called the Door Walk. Uh, that was, uh, 
Yeah, that was a bit of a goof on Sega's uh, side there in the uh, in in the original release of Fantasy Star Online, whereby either by equipping either a double saber or just your bare hands, uh, by going through the attack animation and angling yourself in such a specific way, uh, you could actually move backwards further into the door and eventually wiggle your way through to the other side. Okay, there's an antidote. Let's go ahead and feed our mag. And there we go, level 12. Uh, mags can go up to level 200 themselves. Uh, and you're typically going to max out a mag way before you ever hit uh, level 200 yourself on your character. Uh, I remember uh, back in the day there were parties uh, dedicated specifically uh, to groups that just kind of sat around in uh, uh, on board uh, Pioneer 2 and they would just uh, talk and at the same time feed their mag to level it up. Uh, those were some of the memories from that game and that kind of transitioned also to uh, Fantasy Star Universe uh, whereby during the initial launch of Fantasy Star Universe you would have these groups because your techniques leveled up the more you use them uh, you'd have these groups that would continuously buff each other with uh, different buffs or uh, even cast uh, uh, Resta to uh, level up the technique. Uh, yes, I do remember that name. Um, it just kind of slipped my mind. Um, typically, uh, for me though, since I use uh, a mag uh, I typically didn't have to be in one of those, uh, one of those mag farm parties, uh, parties. And of course, uh, when it comes to Rappies, if you can, always try to get the second shot on them once they go down. Because sometimes they'll drop something for you. Should be the last of the capsules there. I don't think this nest spat anything out, actually. Kind of curious what happened there. So let us report back to Raton. Hmm. <laughs> you have all three castles. Now let's get out of this dangerous place. Hurry! Ah! Alright, and let's go ahead and sell what we've got.
So at this point... Yeah, so just using the uh, rifle I've got here, that's adding an additional uh, 24 points of damage. So actually, I don't even need these handguns anymore. And this is, uh, this is basically where we can see how uh, rifles and uh, sabers are essentially very close in terms of how much damage they do. Uh, so just for comparison, uh, this saber is only doing one extra point of damage. Uh, so it's not a, uh, it's not a huge uh, difference there. One slot on that. Uh, the Moon Atomizers, um, those are items that you're really only going to need when you're online with other players, uh, since, uh, they just revive a fallen teammate. Let's see if we can get one more feeding here. And let's max out our antidotes once again. Okay, any units? Nothing. They'll pop up eventually. Alright, let us talk to our client. I'm going there again once those monsters are exterminated. Hope you got a lot of years waiting. I'll make sure he doesn't cause any more trouble like this again. Please get your reward. Alright, so we got 700 Masita out of that. And I think we have time for one more mission today. So, create a party, episode one. One person mode. And this is Magnitude of Metal, a valuable commodity on where a goal was lost. And the client is Garon, a trader. Retrieve items that were stolen on a trip back from our goal. Uh, yes, Rooks, uh, if you were a force, you could only use frames, uh, while if you're a hunter or a ranger, you could use both frames and armor. Uh, and there were also certain specifically named items or, or armors that you could uh, you could only wear as certain classes uh, and even as certain races. Uh, are you a, are you the ranger from the guild? I'm Garon, a trader. I want you to go down to Regol and retrieve my lost items. It's really important. A business opportunity the likes of which no one has seen before. I'm sure I'll become a zillionaire when I get it all back. That useless ranger said that an android took them. Find that android and get back my items, understand? If you need any more info, ask the stupid incompetent ranger. Alright, so... Garon's commodity? Ah, they're just Max. Garon happened to find out that Mags could be found on the ground. He asked me to collect some for him. I accepted it ma uh, for Masetta. I collected enough mags on Regol to make everyone happy, but then... I thought about the mags and the hunters who used them before. Mags are just protectors invented by a scientist. But we're given one when we become hunters. It's kind of tradition. Mags are an essential piece of equipment for hunters, right? When I was thinking this, an android appeared, and... It was right, though. Garon shouldn't use them to get Masetta. Uh, yes, uh, Rooks, uh, from, uh, from item boxes specifically, if I remember correctly. The Hunter's Guild. We generally call all hunters, rangers, and fo forces just hunters. The Guild is a place for hunters to get a lot of information. They also assist hunters by finding jobs at the counter. They aren't part of the government. They're totally independent. They have total extra ter territorial talent. Extra territoriality inside the guild. Ah, 
I don't think Garon is a good trader. I heard he belongs to a suspicious traders group. His view on things is so narrow that he'll never be a successful trader. Credibility is important for people to have. It's an invaluable commodity. Okay, you're saying the same thing as uh, before. I'm looking for the uh, for the new characters that pop up on the ship. Uh, but it looks like that is it. So let's go ahead and make our way down once again to the forest. Okay, so for once we are starting in a uh, different spot here. This being uh, essentially the back uh, where... Uh, where we found Ash before, as well as one of the uh, one of the uh, capsules. Okay, so I see somebody up on the hill over there, uh, but because of how the game is designed, we actually can't just simply climb a hill and jump up. So we're gonna have to take the long way. I mean, I'm pretty much giving Sega all the breaks I can here. I mean, this... Fantasy Star Online was the first console online role-playing game. They had quite a feat uh, that they achieved uh, through uh, through this game here. And what made it all possible was a couple of things. First, uh, the fact that pretty much anybody that uh, owned a uh, Dreamcast uh, was given a modem built into it. For uh, Japan, they uh, started with 33.6 uh, uh, kilobit uh, per second baud modems, uh, and then uh, eventually, uh, I think it was a 54 kilobit version was released. And in the West, uh, uh, we just started with the uh, 54 kilobit version. Uh, one of the very nice things about Fantasy Star Online, though, uh, is outside of when you need to patch up, you could play Blue Burst on just a regular modem. You did not need a broadband adapter for it. And that's kind of both a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because the game itself uh, is run mostly by the client. The server is there to help facilitate uh, things such as uh, getting other players into your game and such, but the monsters that you're going to see on your screen are going to be unique to your game essentially. And that kind of causes an issue uh, when it comes to online play in that monsters that you see on your screen in one spot may not be in the same spot for other players. Uh, and as I was looking to do this series originally, I was hoping to have uh, three other players with me uh, and basically do a split screen uh, with them. But I learned about this fact as I was trying to do that research, and I realized that that just simply was not going to work. The only version of the game where I would actually be able to effectively do a split screen is the GameCube version, where you could have up to four players at the same time. But if we went with that, I wouldn't be able to do it in widescreen like this, and the split screen itself would cause the menus and everything like that to essentially be very minimized. Um, plus, you were kind of restricted to just kind of standard runs, if I remember correctly. There might have been some quests that you could do, um, and in fact, I think you could do challenge quests with it as well, and battle quests, um, but beyond that, um, 
you were kind of limited on what you could uh, actually do. Uh, anyway, let's speak to this uh, rock has seal here. Well, one's still missing. I was surprised. Ah, excuse me, have you seen a mag around here? Uh, I'm looking for it. What? You came here to retrieve mags? No, no, I didn't mean to take them from the ranger. But they all look so sad, so I just started talking to them. And they looked very happy. I just wanted to say hello. But they all wanted to come with me, and they chased after me. Then everyone returned to their master's place. They aren't here now. Only one mag was saying that it would come with me, but it disappeared. Sorry about that. Are you going to look for it? Let me join you. Maybe it didn't stray too far from me. By the way, I'm Eleanor. Eleanor Camille. I'm an android. So, Eleanor here is actually a pretty important portion of the kind of the side story that makes up this game. Are you mad because I let the mags run away? I'm sorry. But please listen, I don't know if you're aware of this, but mags are intelligent. When a hunter equips a mag, it recognizes him or her as its master. Some mags are clever. They can protect or heal their masters. Moreover, some can do a lot of photon damage. Doc told me, but I forgot. Uh, anyway, mags will try to help you if you're nice to them. Mags feel very sad when they're when they lose their masters. And again, uh, once again, that is the uh, that's the emotional AI at work uh, within the mags. Uh, let's see what we've got in these boxes here. Just uh, some weapons and a little bit of Masetta. Okay, yeah, uh, I kind of figured that that was going to be a, f a factor with the GameCube as well, that that uh, the hardware probably wouldn't be uh, uh, fast enough to actually run it very well. I mean, it was definitely a feature in there, but it, um... But it's also, uh, if I remember correctly, it was very hard to set it up, because... If I remember correctly, you had to essentially transfer your character from one memory card to another. And you had to repeat that step for all the players before you could even start up the split screen mode. And then of course uh, each player needed their own controller. Um, but even with the GameCube version, it, it certainly was not without its bugs. Uh, especially with the online mode for uh, the GameCube version, whereby eventually what was uh, known as the double save was uh, a part of uh, the online life, and that had a risk of any time the game saved, it could potentially corrupt the memory card, and that's a very unfortunate fact that, uh, that happened uh, because of the double save. Um, Excuse me, I don't know if I should tell you this, but... Bright, your mag is hungry. It's true. It's alive. It needs something to eat. And it's best to give a mag its favorite item. Each mag has its own characteristics and its own favorite items. Some like monomate, others like dynate. To feed your mag, open the menu window, window select item pack, then mag. Then select give items, that's it. It's easy. Try to know your mag. It grows as its master gains experience. Well, thank you for the uh, reminder there. Because it is, in fact, time for me to feed it. Alright, there we go, level 14. Uh, another thing uh, that happened with, um, with the GameCube version, specifically with the uh, Japanese version, I know about this because I have a copy of that. Uh, like I said, I've been importing for a very long time. Uh, the original release of the GameCube version had a very serious item duplication bug. It was so bad that Sega had to do a recall on that version of the game and issue a new disc to anybody that turned theirs in. 
Uh, it was so bad, in fact, that they separated those players with the new disc away from the from the players with the old disc. And so uh, those players eventually lost access to the servers. And so when that happened, I knew that the uh, I knew that at that point the English version was already out. And so at that point, I just transferred over to the English version of the game. Uh, which is essentially the Japanese version. You just had to switch your language on the GameCube, and you were all set. Bright, your mag is very cute. It likes you a lot, Bright. Huh? How can I communicate with mags? Well, because... I'm so sorry, I just don't know. Yeah, that's gonna come up in the, uh, in the story eventually. Um, and the, uh, the thing with, um, switching to the English language, uh, that also worked for the Japanese version of version 2 as well. Uh, so, uh, since I had a way, uh, since I had a way to boot the game, uh, in the, uh, on the Dreamcast for version 2, um, even though the system was region locked, I was able to, uh, use the, uh, use the system to basically boot version 2. Um, I was able to get into, uh, version 2 before a lot of other players could. Oh, I just remembered. When mags get damaged, they charge energy to endure the pain. The charged energy can be converted to a photon blast. But I'm not sure. When the energy is fully charged, your mag tells you to use the power. And uh, so that's what happens uh, when it fills up to 100%. Right now, I'm at 19%. Uh, and it'll give you that ding sound when it's time. Uh, let's see, I think it was... Yeah, it was right here. Hey, there it is! There, over there, can you see it? Got missing mag. Hi again. I see. It visited its ex-master to say bye-bye. Now it's done. It says it wants to have a new master. See? Mags prefer a master that loves them. Right. Please take care of your mag. Even if you can't hear its voice, know that it understands you. Okay. Mags are good partners for uh, to hunters. I know my mag. I can feel my mag because I'm very close to it. Hmm. And just where is your mag, huh? All right, let's make our way back up to Pioneer 2. Exactly my point, Brooks. All right, so let's sell what we can. And let's go ahead and feed our mag if we can. Yes, we can. And let us stock up again, once again, on antidotes. Uh, one thing about um, the uh, techniques in this game, if you're looking for healing techniques, um, the first time you'll be able to start using them and being able to heal other players is at level 3, so uh, you would definitely want to get Resto level 3 if you're playing uh, a non-Android character. Anything new here? Uh, they do actually have a Dim Rifle, which is a weapon that can uh, strike an enemy down with one hit, uh, but that has a, a low rate of accuracy on it, so I'm not going to go with that. And still no units, so that will happen eventually. Let's make our way back over to the client. What? This is the only one?
their masters were already dead. Anyway, you can get your Masetta at the guild. Your job is finished. Uh, M8 Top 3, that is a bit of a loaded question. Let me think for a moment here. So there's the four original Fantasy Star games, plus the two Game Gear games, that's six, plus eight for the Text Adventures, that's, uh, that's 14, Fantasy Star Online, Fantasy Star Online. I need a calculator for this, bear with me for a moment here. <laughs> 14 plus, let's see, 1, 2 versions plus episode 1 and 2 plus blue burst plus episode 3, that's another 5. And then there were the two Fantasy Star Universe games plus the three PSP games. And then Fantasy Star Online 2. And Fantasy Star. Nova plus Fantasy Star Online 2S. So that comes out to 27 games in the series. Um, and I'm just counting Fantasy Star Online 2 once there because uh, it's not actually a brand new game that players had to purchase with with that. It's just it's just like another expansion, except not really because you don't typically get more content. It's more, it's an episode in the story rather than it being an entire expansion pack. But, anyway, so we've gone through the first of the government missions as well as the first set of the side story missions for Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst. Like I mentioned, this is going to be a long-running series here because we've only just scratched the surface here today. And I've got a lot of tales to tell uh, about my history with this game. But for now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close things off for today. If you've enjoyed today's content, please do make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you're notified whenever I go live or whenever I do put out a new video. I also have a Discord. Link to that is in the description below. Uh, whenever I go live or whenever there is a new video, I also put a notification in there as well. And, uh, uh, Chris, yes, uh, I do, uh, or Dragon, rather. Uh, I do have plans to do uh, Episode 3 as well, but let's kind of get through uh, Blue Burst first here. Thank you for joining me today. This is Prince Brightstar signing off. I'll catch you next time.